Well, I didn't initially plan on making a video about this whole project, but I thought, well, it might be helpful for, for, for some people in a way you can save some money. The project I'm into is changing out my heat and air system myself. Uh, this is actually on a, on a rental property. What you're looking at here is an air handler. It's an old train unit. This thing has served me for 40 years. 40-year-old 40 air handler, two-ton unit. So, and let me show you the rest of it. Actually, it's at a rental property right next door to me here. So there's the crawl space that air handler came out from under and I'm working on. This is the outside unit, the compressor locked up in it. So in, in the past I've bought compressors. Actually, this 40 year old air, air handler has went through, uh, this, is, well, this unit has already had one compressor replaced in it. And then the original train outside unit failed many years ago. So actually it's, so it's went through like three compressors over the 40 years. But uh, so, but I just decided to change it out because now compressors are getting like 600 bucks. It just it wouldn't make no sense to have a 40 year old uh, air handler. And you get these new systems now online, delivered to your door for less than 2,000 bucks, uh, or, or right at it. So that way, it's a whole new system. It's um, a higher efficiency. You can see how tall they are. Huge. This is a two-ton unit, and you can. Now, I have the ability over the years, I've gathered, uh, gathered gathered up enough tools, I can do everything myself. I can pull the vacuum, sort it, raise it. But in the past, when I, before, when I didn't have that ability, I didn't have the tools, I would still buy the systems complete, put everything all in, run the line set, run the wires, have everything ready to go, and then the, I call a local HVAC guy, and he'd come by and uh, just hook up the line set, pull a vacuum, and, and balance the Freon. And, I was good to go. So that's the way you can save you some money. So I'll just show you a little bit of this project, what it's like when I'm getting into. Okay, you see I'm under the house now. Here's the new, let me turn this noisy thing off. Oh, it's much better. So, show you a little bit better where I'm at. See, there's the crawl space hole way back that way. There's the old, old trunk line from 30, 40 years ago. And I have to have a new piece made right here to get it to adapt. So I'm still, I got to do some shimming and adjusting to get the trunk line li lined up. Got to get this uh, air handler set exactly right. They want to have a, this end to be five eighths higher than the, than the back end so the water drains properly. But, and, and they come with a good manual. I got a manual here somewhere. It comes with a good manual, shows you how to wire everything up. I just did that a while ago, wired up the thermostat and cause you can see it, it does work. I got that part done. Uh, pretty straightforward stuff. You read the manual. The tricky stuff was when you're dealing with the uh, the Freon and line sets and stuff. But like I said, if you can't do that, just run the line sets, have them ready to go. Call a HVAC guy, have them come in and sort of things up. And uh, I'll make a few more little snippets as I, as I go along here. Show you what it's like. All right. I was just telling you how you Anybody can do this. If you read a manual, you can put one of these in yourself. They have really good install manuals. And it shows you here how to hook up the thermostat to the to the, to the thermostat, to the air handler, to the heat pump. Everything's color coded. And that's, that's that mess of wires right there. That goes to the thermostat in the house and for the, the outside unit. And uh, tells you about changing the fan speed. Uh, that kind of stuff. Just a lot of little tidbits, you know, about getting the, the tilt on the on the air handler, the, the cor correct pitch for the water drains. So I've got this installed now. I got my I got my screws in here. That's a big thing. You know, want to make sure you seal up all your gaps. Uh, because right now when you turn it on, you feel air blowing around. But I got that good foil tape. I'll come around here and tape all that solid. And, get, and then I have to insulate this because this is not insulated on the ins, out, inside, so I have to insulate it on the, on the outside so it doesn't sweat. And that's important too. Uh, it, places like this, you want to make sure they're sealed good, so no air can be sucked into it because this uh, this is sitting underneath the house where it's humid. And any air leaks like that, it'll draw the humid air into the air handler, and that moist humid air will get will make all this stuff sweat and rust and give you trouble on your electronics. So it's very important you got a really good seal uh, on all your wherever there's a wire that goes into the air handler and, and your when you put the side covers on make sure that's good and tight and sealed up well so i got that project done so i guess the next thing i may work on my drain i still got the rear box i gotta mount on there plenum i believe it's called so anyways so if i can do this you can do it too just, just read the book here and 
step by step. You can get her done. Easy peasy. Okay, another update. You can see here, this is mastic. Right there, DP mastic. I'm putting on all the seams so we can keep out the humid air. You want this is to be as most as efficient as possible. You may think, well, this is a rental house. Why go to all the trouble? Well, if you keep your utilities down for your renters, you'll have happy renters. And hopefully they'll stay with you a good long time. Um, I was going to point this out, something that gets easily missed. See that big gap right there? If you don't seal that up, then all that humid, moist air is going to get sucked right into the cabinet. Go right through there, all that humidity is going to be getting all the stuff wet, damp, rust up. Then it draws it into the next cavity here, right into the airstream, and blows it up through the house and makes the system have to work all that much harder. So that's why it's very important to get your cabinet uh, sealed up tight, insulated well. Okay, it's time to hook up the line set. Now this is where most homeowners couldn't do, but I'm going to attempt to do it anyways. Uh, but one thing you want to do is when you cut the line set with your pipe cutter here, you'll leave a sharp edge and that can cause turbulence. So you don't want turbulence. Get you a cool little tool like this and you can see, I think you can see it. Yeah, see those little shavings of copper? So you just kind of go in there like this, roll that around, it gets a nice smooth. But you, you gotta do this when the pipe is down because you definitely don't want any shavings getting into your system. That could just ruin it, make, a, make for a really bad day. So I'm gonna clean that up really well. So that's, that's my first step and among many others I gotta finish today. Okay, here's the tricky part. I'm about to flow my nitrogen so I can do my brazing. And this is what HV AC technicians should be doing also. Um, I don't know if all of them do it or not, but uh, if you have someone to put in your system in, you might want to make sure they do this. So this pushes the oxygen out of the line set. So when you braze, you don't get a bunch of oxidization, a bunch of soot and stuff inside the line set that could in turn stop up... Uh, your TXV valve and other things that, that you don't want to plug up. So I'm, let, I'm letting up purge, I'm purging the oxygen out of the line set. This is the line set that's going in, going into the coil inside and coming back out right there. So I'm pushing out the oxygen. You know, cranking it up here quite a bit at first just to push out all the air. Then I'll slow it down to about 2 psi because when you're brazing you want very low pressure flowing through there so you don't blow out your braze. So I'm going to let that do its thing, and I'll crawl back under there and light the torch. Well, it's a tight squeeze, but i got my torches under here. And I'm going to light, light up the, the torch here and uh, and raise these two connections. Got me a wet rag on here so we don't melt anything that's important behind there. So we'll see how that goes. Let's make sure we get a good seal and test all that also. Okay, next step is to test with nitrogen. I hope I have enough. I've got um, maybe a little over 600 psi left in the tank, so I'm gonna pressure test this, like, like the manual says, to 150 psi. This will test my brazing, make sure it holds, make sure we don't have any leaks. So let's we'll get to that and we'll see how that works. So we have good news. It got locked dark on me last night and ran out of time. So anyway, last night I pressurized this up to 153 psi. And looky there, it's held all night long. So that means my brazing that I did evidently is, is good and it's going to hold. So now the next step is to pull the vacuum and uh, we're getting really close to firing this thing up. Alright, see I got my vacuum pump running and I got my gauge on here. We're going to pump it down. The book says we want at least 500 microns pulled down in vacuum. So we're going to wait on this thing, let it run a while and see what we get down to. Okay, so just like the book says, we got to pull it down to 300 microns, and I've done that. Actually, I've got it all the way down to 220 microns. It's got a really good vacuum. Now we're going to shut the vacuum off and let it stand and make sure it stays. It doesn't go over 500 microns. As long as it doesn't go over 500 microns, then we'll be ready to release the Freon. Okay, well, it's been 10 minutes. And we're holding it at 390. So now we can uh, release... Yeah, right now, the Freon is inside the compressor still. I'm opening up these valves, and because there's a vacuum in the line set, now the Freon's going to flood into the line set. 
And after that settles down, I'll be able to turn on the power and see if we have air conditioning. Freon is flowing. Don't know if you can hear it or not. That line's getting cold. So it's going yeah, in. It's going in. On. You see inside the house is 78 degrees. Step over here to the register and shoot it with this. We got 55 degree air coming out. So we got a really good split. So it's gonna be nice and cold in here before you know it. And another benefit is this thing is much quieter than the old old unit. Pressures look good right on the money according to the book. So I think we're in good shape. Now I just gotta get underneath there and finish tidying up some things. Gotta hook up the condensate pump so the water pumps out and all that stuff. Okay, one more final thing is, um, you know, I was talking about the fact that this has enough Freon for a uh, 15 foot of line set, and that's about exactly what I got. And it turned out just right, because I didn't have to add or take away any Freon. In fact, it shows you here you want uh, 9 degrees of subcooling. Now, what subcooling is, is the difference in temperature between the center of this coil and this line right here. I've got, I've got my probe taped to it, 93 degrees based on my pressures, so I've got, I'm right at 9 degrees uh, subcooling, 9 degree difference in temperature. So that's right on the money. So that's, that's all worked out really, really well, thank goodness. So uh, let's get into the house and see what we can button up under there. Okay, for something a little extra, it tells you the amp load it should be while it's running. So I've got my gauge on there. We've got the same number, 10.1. And that says 10.1. So all that's specking out good. Something else I did just to make sure that these uh, little valves aren't leaking. So I put some uh, leak detector on there. And there there's no bubbles, because that, that could be a source of trouble. Later on, if those uh, Schrader valves, that's what they're called, if they're, if they're leaking, you could lose your Freon through them. So they look good. I'll put my caps on there. and It should be a, a nice, tight job with no leaks, we hope. Well, you can see I'm back under the house, and I've got everything all taped up real well. Now this is the intake side, and I chose to tape it up instead of using mastic like I did on the that end. Because I know from experience, some point in time we'll have to take this off and get into it. Sometimes the filters get dirty, the dirt and dust get past the filters, and end up getting in, in the uh, on the coil, and it has to be cleaned. And I'll have to take this off, but that may be years down the road, but at least it'll be easier. But it is taped nice and tight all the way around the back side the bottom see how well I've got everything taped all, all around the the lines coming in and on my um my drip pan well I don't have a drip pan but the drain pan these are my my trap I built because you need to trap holds water in here so it doesn't suck air back into the airstream so I actually I'm, I'm, I'm about to test that right now so I got me a jug of water I'm going to pour it into the trap, and then that little pump should come on, pump, pump the water outside. See, and I can't use gravity to get it out. i got to rely on the pump. Yeah, eventually, it'll kick on here. I thought, oh, any day now. Fill that, fill that, fill that. That thing holds quite a bit of water, doesn't it? Oh, my goodness. Hope I brought enough water. There she goes. Alright. So the water is getting pumped right outside. Ah, that's quick. So I know that's done. Uh, I've got to finish cleaning up my tools. One last step I've got to do is insulate this part up here. I can't remember if we uh, if I showed you all this or not. But I use mastic to seal all this up. Seal those joints. Everything around here. All these are sealed, there's no air leaking around, but this is just metal, it's not insulated. So I got me some bubble wrap behind me. I'm gonna wrap it in bubble. And, cause you can see how, how it's sweating already, that cold air on it. So we'll get that wrapped up and tidy up. And I can almost call this finished. Okay, a couple of things before I crawl up under here. Got all my tools gathered up in totes, getting ready to get out of here for the last time. I got my insulation wrapped around the uh, takeoff the plenum I think it's what it's called so I was going to point out it's amazing the, where the, the air can suck in on the cabinets even right here I can feel air coming around that breaker and uh, of course if, it, if, if that's hot humid air getting into the airstream 
not hurting the performance also but it comes with this little rubber part you just put on here it's, it's peel and stick and that sticks on there and it keeps the air from leaking through so I'm gonna do that here in just a second um, I was going to point out my the, the trap here I've had in the past I've seen these things freeze and bust sometimes so I got this in real close to the ground I'm gonna put the gravel around it so that way if we have to get a hard quick freeze um, and there's water left in there it hasn't evaporated the warmth warmth from the ground will keep it from from freezing and breaking so that's my ideal on that anything else I think that's about got it oh I know what I was gonna say you know I, I realize a lot of people can't do all the brazing of the lines that part you have to have a, a, a HVAC technician do that but the law of the grunt work you can do yourself you know putting all this in anybody can do that just follow the instructions run the wires screw in mount the duct work take tape everything up nice and tight and then just call your HVAC guy to come in here and do the brazing set the free on and off you go you save yourself some money and you can take the time to really tape up things really well to know that you got a, a nice tight seal on your duct work and that's going to save you on your electric bill later on down the line so that's the way we did that so i'm gonna climb out of here and try to finish up okay we're back into the house dropped it down it's been around about an hour it's down to 74 now and temperature wise 48 47 nice nice well, there it is it's all done i was going to show you what i've done here for my condensate pump for that water pumps out i got a little bowl there so I know as long as there's water in that, I know it's working. If it's ever dry after a few days, I'll know that the condensate pump is not doing its job. And I'll have to investigate. Sometimes that happens with those little pumps. <laughs> they fail on you. But as all, all is done, everything totaled by doing it myself is a maybe a little under $2,100. Two ton unit installed, working. Actually, I checked a while ago, I got 25 degree air split. I got like 74 coming in at the register. Is it? And 48 coming out the vent that's in nice cold temperature really good good setup so anyway maybe that will encourage you to tackle your own project put your own two-ton system in do it yourself you can do it